Welcome back, heroes, to some more custom NPC scripting. So today we're going to be covering flight. Now, as this is 1.7, custom NPCs cannot fly. Now, of course, the best solution to this is just move on to, I think it's like version 1.10, 1.12. It might be in 1.9. All those versions have just like a simple checkbox for NPCs to fly. So if the mod got updated, we would have flying NPCs. But since, you know, DVC and a lot of other similar mods are currently in 1.7, I'm going to try to come up with uh, the best solutions that I can. So to start off, one of the things that you might think, okay, well... If, uh, if they can't fly, then wh why not just, like, uh, you know, teleport them? So I'm going to go ahead and quickly rustle up a script to show you why that doesn't work. Okay, so what we have here is on the update, we grab target, which, by the way, I also wanted to mention, I've been getting the target through, like, the target or the damaged event because you could get target there and then setting it, but I've realized that the NPC actually has its currently attacking t uh, target that it's currently attacking, this is a much better way to do it uh, because A, it's already there. You don't have to do another method. You don't have to store it or whatever. So uh, I just want to point that out. If you want to know like who they're currently targeting, you could use that. If you want the target to persist, then that's when you probably want to have some way of getting their uh, target on this point and then, you know, holding it. But if you just want to see who they're currently attacking, this is the best way to do it. Anyways, so target's not null. Get type equals one. And if the current target is above the NPC so simple just set the position and you think okay so that means that he'll he'll move three spaces up every time trying to get to me uh let me fix that okay so now he's gonna come after me so if I do that he starts flying up but as you notice he can't can't quite quite get up there eventually he just starts falling and he doesn't stop falling so the problem here is with Minecraft velocity is something that we can't really control. So every time he goes up, gravity pulls him down. And I could set him to me, but the problem is he'll fall down immediately. So overall, this is not a very efficient way to actually do, uh, to actually actually make them fly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use this, modify it a bit, and we're gonna use this later. But for now, we know uh, this is when we want them to fly. So what we're going to do is instead, I have one of two methods to actually make this work. So of course, I'm going to use objects as I've been using before. So var fly equals kablow. Uh, and then we're going to put everything into here because I, I kind of like the way of using objects. Well, actually, let's go ahead and also save it. So mpc.setTempData fly fly. So we can put all of our methods in here, front load everything. And what what's important, by the way, putting it in init as opposed to update is that init only happens once when the NPC resets, where update happens all the time. We only want to build the object once. Um, so that way we don't use up uh, a lot of resources. So it's very important. Okay, so what are we going to need for this? So first off, I want to get a uh, way to actually make them fly. Uh, one of the biggest things is that when uh, we need to figure out where they're going while they're in the air, we need to actually move them. So the concepts that we're going to have here is that because of velocity, we have to counter it. We can't control it, but there are two methods I know that we could do to counteract it. One is to set an explosion at their feet, which will actually give them an upward velocity. And two, to actually set a block where they are standing so that way they stop falling because they're considered on the ground. So we're gonna first do the explosion method, uh, which first we're gonna need a few things. So what I wanna do first is add a uh, particular function. So one of the things is that before I mentioned that I like pretty much I made the functions up here and then I assigned them later. You don't have to do that. You could also declare them inside your object. So we're gonna add a, let's call it a direction called dir for direction. So here we're gonna write a new function. As you can see, I just pretty much start uh, another object here. Oh wait, no, I need to do function dir. Uh, and there we go. So we started a function within the object itself and this will be something that we could call later. We could just go uh, fly.dir. 
The reason why I'm putting in here is because I'm going to use this later and it's actually a multi-use function that's kind of pretty helpful. So what we need here is we need a target. Uh, so it's going to take the NPC to the target. So this is going to kind of declare the target. We might not necessarily need to put the target in there. Actually, now that I think about it, we can just grab it from the NPC. So this is always going to move uh, the NPC to the target. If you want to like have multiple types of targets, that's a whole different issue. But here we go. Okay, so for the first thing is we need the return variable. Actually, let's call this dir with a capital D for the function. And dir will be kind of the return value. This is this is more or less kind of a, a VB6 concept of uh, returning the value of the function, but uh, whatever, this will work. Okay, here we go, equals to blah. So direction is going to be a essentially a, a vector. So a vector has an X and Z. So to kind of describe the concept I'm going for here, this is kind of a, uh, a math concept that's applied to like three, 3D, um, I, I don't know what you call it. It's essentially something, a way that we could do to determine where the uh, player needs to go by to determining their direction they need to travel and applying a velocity. This is, this is like a, a 3D uh, geometric mathematical concept. So I'm not going to explain all of what's involved because it's more or less I looked it up online to figure out how to do it. You can learn more about, about it, but essentially what we need to do is first we need to determine the initial direction. So the way to think about this is let's say uh, the player's X is at 50. We need to add some kind of value to get to where the target is, which is at 100. So by basic math, you would take uh, 100 minus 50 to get what X is. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna take the target minus uh, where our current guy is for each one of these values. All right, so there we go. As you can see, X is now declared as uh, the attacking targets per current X minus the NPC's X and so on and so forth. So what this is, is if I were to return, uh, utilize this direction, then I'm pretty much going to put the NPC at wherever the player is, which is not quite what I want. I want it to essentially move in that direction, but not all of the way. So now what we got to do is a concept which is called normalize. If I could spell it, normalize. So what we need to do is we need to normalize the direction that they're traveled to basically make the iteration of travel equal to one, and then we can multiply it by whatever kind of speed factor that we want. So to normalize it, first off, we need to get the square root of a few things. So we, we, this is going to be equal to math.skrt. So by the way, I, I don't know if I mentioned before, but math is a uh, an object that actually contains a lot of mathematical functions. Just if you Google JavaScript math, you could find a lot of things that it could do. A lot of times if you're trying to do a mathematical operation, this is the math, the math class is the way to go. All right, so what we need to do is we need to take direction X times direction X. Yeah, by the way, this is how you normalize it. Uh, again, this is one of those concepts which I don't personally fully understand myself, but I know this works. All right, direction uh, Z plus times direction Z. I think it has something to do with like the Pythagorean theorem or whatever is the A squared plus B squared equals Z squared. Essentially, you're getting like the hypotenuse. Uh, anyway, so we grab this value which is fairly useful. Uh, and then what we do is we use that to apply to what the current X, Y, and Z of the directions are. We do this. It's, um, so essentially it's like, it's like a ratio. So we have a full direction that we know that each vector or vector X, Y, Z value is going to uh, be moved to, but we need to divide that by a number that will normalize it. That's what this concept is. If you look up normalize itself, you can see what see what I mean. Because like I said, I don't even fully understand it. I just know it works. That's that's sometimes that's just half the battle. Okay, so apply it by the square root. Apply it by but by the way, if any of you guys happen to know in the comment section below uh what this more of means, uh feel free to like talk about it and we can discuss it there because I feel like it's a, it's a level of education that we could probably expand upon. But all I know is that the basic concept is you get the full distance that they needed to travel 
you normalize it so you get the full distance as a concept of one. So it's like, um, like if you were to iterate that number of times, you'll eventually get there. And then you multiply it by a speed factor. So we got that. Uh, let's go ahead and declare a value within our function speed. Uh, and then we could declare it as, let's say, two. Because this means that if we want to, whenever we use the fly object, we can actually adjust the speed whenever we want. So we go multiply by speed. Uh, and then we do it for the rest of them. All right, so now what this does is this will, this is a direction when we add to our current position, we'll move the NPC in a direction towards the target uh, at a rate of what speed is. So what we need to do finally is we need to actually add the NPC's current position so that way they actually move to where we're going. And then what we could do is we could use set position at this point to actually move them where we want to go. Now I'm doing this simply because I don't want to have to do a lot of checks and balances to determine the direction. Uh, like what you could do is like if X is less than blah, then you can plus X or if X is greater than blah, you can minus X to get them eventually to where you want to go. But this basically tells you, okay, add these values and it will move the, the player or the, uh, the NPC in the direction that you want to go. Remember, you're taking the, uh, the target value minus the, uh, NPC's current value to get there. All right. So now we have a value, which is where they're going. Which, by the way, the main reason why we're doing this is while they're in the air, they're not going to be able to move because the NPC is not designed to do this. So we are moving him for them. This has kind of some problematic consequences, but it, look, it works. <laughs> okay, so now we need to actually move the NPC to the position. So we can do set, uh, stupid rain. All right, set position, set position, and then we go... Uh, let's see, we go, uh, I think that's it. We just, oh, no, wait. Now I remember what I was doing this. So this is essentially the, the value here that we want to return. So we just go return dir. So what we have here is a function that's going to return a object, which is has the x, y, z value that we want to move our object towards. So we could actually use this for both of our flight methods. So let's go ahead and start with the flight method. So let's let's add a, let's say it's a blink. And then we add another function. And let's say, fly, let's call this fly, fly E for fly explosions. Cause we're gonna do flying with explosions first. Cause what could go wrong with flying with explosions? So when we call this function, we, we'll actually, you know, we'll do everything that we need to do, but we're flying with uh, explosions. Uh, so first off, uh, let's see. So we need to get direction. So we could go var dir equals this dot dir. Okay, so that will get us the direction we want to go. And it's a method, so bam. So now we could do npc dot set position. And then we could do uh, dir dot x, dir dot y, dir dot z. Now, something I also remembered, which we're probably going to have to add later, but I'll, I'll, I'll add it later and actually describe what I'm talking about. But we also need to know when uh, the NPC is above them for the actual explosion. Uh, actually, that's what we're probably going to have to do now. Okay, so anyways, so we call the function. Uh, we got the direction we need to go, and we set them uh, moving in that direction. But now we need to, because it, if they're above the ground, we need to actually counteract uh, gravity. So the, here is where we go world dot world dot explode <laughs> so we explode at where the character is minus one so we're exploding at their feet so it makes them go up we're doing an explosion factor by three we're also not setting them on fire or actually destroying objects now the thing is we only want them to explode when the npc is currently below the player because if they're above we might as well let gravity do its work and if they're at, you know at the level then we don't want them to explode so we need some kind of check here so what we could do is when we grab the direction we actually have all of the math required to determine if they are above or not so we're going to add another variable here called up which will be a boolean 
fail se there we go so when up is true that means that when we grab the direction we have determined that the player is above so what we could do here is if we do up equals uh let's see so we need this as an expression so it's if dir dot y over sqt is greater than zero i believe because that's like that's uh we've determined that the direction of y needs to move at a rate that is greater than zero so now we've determined that it wants to move up so we determined that it wants to move up so therefore we could do this dot up so if this dot up is true we want him to explode so when explosion happens he will move in the upwards direction i believe that's all we need to do for that we can go ahead and test it and see the what happens but here we go okay so we're gonna go ahead and also get the let's see var fly equals uh mpc dot get temp data fly okay so yeah we're gonna grab the fly object and we're gonna go ahead and have the mpc dot fly e so every every single tick uh assuming that he has a target he will fly upwards now if we attack him Let's see if he flies. He does not. Let's see what went wrong. Oh, yeah, that's right. In order to add fly, I got to actually add it like this. Okay, so that, that determines like the actual object that we could grab. I believe I did everything else correctly. So let's go ahead and try that again. Come on, Kiwi. What are you doing? You going to fly this time? No. Man, I am just not being smart today. It's fly, not NPC. Jeez. All right. Are you going to fly this time? Uh, okay, one other uh, problem that I had here. I'm using speed, but I'm using it as declared as part of the uh, the object. So I need to do, use this. Uh, so many little things. It's it's like it's one of those things where you just like just go for it. You could have all sorts of potential problems. Let's see if we worked out all the bugs. Not yet. We probably have a few more. Huh. So that was interesting. Uh, I forgot to actually use uh, up as declared by this but it wasn't throwing an error not quite sure why that was but i think i might have got yeah there we go gotten all the kinks out so as you can see he's now flying towards me it's um it's not the most elegant version of flight but it is one that will work as you can, if, as you can see as i sit here he moves his way towards me and eventually he'll get over and punch me of course he's uh He's got a lot to work through is the it's there, there's definitely like a lot of problems with how this ends up working why are you currently flying upwards do you do you still have me as a target what what, what are you doing <laughs> yeah i don't know what he was doing there he kind of seemed to bug out i guess he had a target but that target wasn't me so he kept bouncing upwards yeah little weird things like that could happen well anyways as i mentioned this is a method that works, but of course it's not the greatest. So this episode's running a little bit long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the block flight for next episode. And we're going to go ahead and leave that at here. So join us next time as we continue to learn how to make custom NPCs fly. But anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Take care and goodbye.